Hello everyone and welcome to a new review from Class 47 Peter. Now it has been a while since I last did a review and that is because the last model I bought, which is of the 7F, one of the preserved ones, 53809, I didn't review it because I didn't think it was worth doing a review on it because I'd already reviewed the 7F twice before. And so instead I decided to do something a little bit different where I just filmed the model running around on the layouts. But anyway, I'm back in there with a new review and I'm looking at something a little bit different but also something quite special. You can't quite see very clearly what it is at the moment on screen because it's covered with this tissue paper which is, this is how you get it when you first get it in the mail. It is wrapped in this tissue paper which the parcel is also encased with foam which is something you don't get very often. Um, but if you've seen the title then you know what it is anyway so that's a big giveaway. And this model is made by Batman, and this model is a limited edition, produced exclusively for Model Rail, which you can buy off their website, which is where they sell their models, that they get various manufacturers to commission to produce models for them. And I shall link their website in the description if you wish to check their website out or buy anything from them off the website. And this model is the USA Dock Tank, which has been out for a while now, and it's exclusive to only model rail, you can't get it from anywhere else other than them. And there is also a page on their website where you can buy the USA dock tanks which I will link in the description as well. And only 500 of these models have been produced, so it's a case of get one more as you can, because as soon as they're gone, they're gone. And I don't think model rail are going to bring out any more of these models, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Now, there's several different versions that you can get of the USA Dock Tank, one of them of which has already been sold out to pre-orders, for that matter. Uh, the Luffy's they do, there's three BR Black versions, one with the early emblem and two with the light crest. One is weathered, the other is pristine. They also do Southern Black, the NTB National Cobalt Black, and there's also an Army Cooperations livery, which is also black. They also have done a BR Green Malachite livery, yes, I have pronounced that correctly, and that is the model that has been sold out. They've also produced one in the Longmore Military Railway Blue livery, and there's also the one that's preserved on the Keith Flinworth Valley Railway, which is actually in the Golden Orca livery that it would have worn in the Grand Reopening train, when it pulled it, I should say. And then there's this model, which is the BR Departmental Green, which is the one I wanted, and it's the one I've got. Because in my opinion, I think it's one of the best liveries to go for, if not the best. And I think it's also one of the smartest as well. And also it's something different as well, so it's nice to get different liveries like this, and also it's nice to have a Southern Region tank engine that's in this livery, because it's a change. and. It also adds a bit of livery variety in your collection as well, which is good. So first of all we come to the unboxing, so firstly we take off the tissue paper, and there's the model. So even when you're just looking at the model through the packaging, your eyes just straight away pop out your sockets. Go we'll and check there's nothing else in the tissue paper. And then we just put it in the bin. Because we can't really use it again. Then we take off the box leaf which is Batman's typical star packaging that we get now. Th then you have the band in the corner which is proof that it's exclusive to Model Rail. Then on the back of the box you have some brief history. There's not much there obviously but then again it is brief. You can pause and read all that if you want. I'm not going to stop you. And so now we can take out the ice packaging which is what's known as to everyone. Just look at the model. So, what we do is just simply pull out the plastic packaging out of the tray and then we can have a look at all the paperwork inside the box. So first of all we have the warranty service request. And then we have the Leaflet for the Batman Collectors Club, if you wish to join. Then you have the product warranty. And then you have the product maintenance and care, which has various information such as running, cleaning maintenance, lubrication, DCC, and 
mentions about the storage and also the curves that can run on. Then we come on to the instructions for the model, which is a bit different than usual because it's printed in this glossy paper that I haven't seen Batman use before. So, for the instruction manual, it's pretty much the usual stuff we've seen before. It tells you about thank you for purchasing the model. It also gives you a notice about how the model is designed for no less curves than second radius. Anything smaller, it may result in the model derailing. And it also says to not use electronic track cleaners or feedback controllers for the best results of running. It then tells you about the detail parts to fit onto the model, which are two diagrams which show you how to fit them on, as you can clearly see, which in this case it's the drop plates and the vacuum pipes and the brake pipes. The drop plates are fitted to the prototype locomotive, which Batman have not produced, at least not that I'm aware of, but there we go. Then he also tells you about running in and lubrication as well. There's a diagram here to show you where to put some of the lube, in this case, on the axles. Then, on the back, it tells you a bit about DCC ready. So basically putting in a DCC decoder, if you want. And it does tell you a bit of the guarantee as well. It tells you more about lubrication and more diagrams where to put the lubrication. And in the instructions, it does tell you a lot about lubricant. It also tells you about the body movement as well. And also, you can lubricate inside the motor as well in the gears. And there's a bit more about adding the DCC decoder as well. So sometimes they do repeat themselves, but there we go. And interestingly, the diagram on the back there is the same one as the one that was on the inside. But there we go. Then we just take off the plastic cover for the box. And we are now free to have a look at the detail pack inside, to have a look at all those detail parts that you get with the model. So in the detail pack in question, we have a brake rod or brake rigging, whatever you choose to call it, and I'm not going to add it because there's not much point really because you're never going to really look under the locomotive, so I don't really bother adding them. And also we get the two drop plates to fit onto the model, which you can see here where the arrows are. Now I'm not going to add these because first of all, in reality, with the dock tanks that are preserved, they don't have them on. They do not have them fitted. And also, in the many pictures I've seen of the USA dock tanks, I haven't seen any that have these fitted. And also, this particular one in reality, I don't think he had them. But another reason why I'm not going to add them is because, in my opinion, I think they spoil the look of the model. Because it does ruin the look when you fit them on. And I've that's something I've noticed when looking at the diagram in the instructions. It just it doesn't look right with them on. It looks much better without them, but that's just my own little opinion there. And then we have the other bits of details that you get in the back, which are the brake pipes and the vacuum pipes that I shall be adding on the model, as I always do. And all we need to do now is just take off the box clip, lift off the flap, and we just lift the model out of the packaging. It's easy as three, two, one. And then we put the package into one side. And then we just take away that little bit of tissue paper that's under the model there. And we can now look at the model in detail. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, as I always do with these reviews, is talk about the weight of the model. And it is very heavy. There is a lot of weight in here. And that's good, because the weight creates the traction, and without the weight, there would be no traction. And that would mean that the model wouldn't be able to pull anything, so it's no good having a lightweight model that is not going to be able to pull anything, or would struggle to pull anything. Because that is why the weight is important, because if you've got a model that can't pull, then it's just going to be useless at the end of the day. So that is why the weight is important, and that is also why we don't have traction tyres anymore because the weight creates the traction, so there's no need for them now. 
Now we come on to the details. So first of all, we'll talk about the buffers. Now, the buffers are not sprung. So if you like your sprung buffers, then you might find this a bit of a disappointment. But I don't really have much care for them, to be honest, because they are a bit pointless. Because really, you're only going to ever touch the sprung buffers when you're handling the model. And even I rarely tend to do that. But at least there are buffers on the model. That's the important thing. And also, the buffers are actually made of metal. So, that's good that they are made of metal and not plastic, because then they wouldn't be as good. On the buffer beam, we have a coupling hook, and that's nice that Batman have actually fitted it on themselves, because usually they get you to glue them on. And on the buffer beam, you can see the holes where the details go into, and also there are some rivets on the buffer beam as well. And as we expect, on the front of the model, there is an M coupling. So you can take that coupling out of the NEM socket and fit a different one in if you want, but I don't really tend to do that, so I'll just leave them in. Then on both ends of the buffer beam, we have the front footsteps, which, as it is on the real USA dock tanks, the front footsteps are indeed fitted onto the front of the buffer beam. And so it's brilliant that Batman have captured that on the model. And I like the fact that they've already fitted them on for you, so you don't have to glue them on later by yourself. Then on the front of the running board above the buffer beam we have separately fitted lamp irons and also just behind the buffer beam you can see some extra detail there. Then we come on to one of the detail features that make these locomotives unique and that's the running board because in this case you don't really get much of a running board on top of the buffer beam, just behind there, you can see there's a gap, and you can see some detail parts behind it. But, with the exception of having that bit of running board on top of the buffer beam where the lamp points are, you do get a bit of running board just at the side of the smoke box where the front of the water tanks are, that fit round the outer steam pipes. And also there's a little bit of running board that fixes onto the front of the side of the smoke box as well. So basically, you have a big gap there by the cylinders and then up above at the front part of the smoke box at the side, you have a little bit of running board there and then there's a gap behind that and by the outer steam pipes you have another bit of running board there just in front of the water tanks, you know what I mean. And that's something that makes these locomotives unique and it's something very different as well, which is what makes them special. And that is something that I love that Batman have replicated on the model because it looks stunning. Then we come onto the cylinders, which do have some rivet detail on them. On the cylinder heads at the front there and on the side of the cylinders, there are some rivets, which is always a great bit of detail to have. Then, of course, we have the outer steam pipes that fix onto the top of the cylinders, and there are some little bit of rivet details around that. And also you can just about glimpse some pipe work, just atop of the steam pipes there. Then you have all the link motion, and the valve gear, and the solid rods. It's all connected up as you see it on the real locomotives, and when you see all that moving on the model, it's such a wonderful sight to see. Then under the side tanks and the sides of the cab, you have some pipe work, which you can see runs under the side tanks and the cab which run on top of the drive wheels and down to where the footstep is. And then of course we can't leave out the rear footstep either. And then under the footstep you can see some additional detail there just by the rear drive wheel. Not entirely sure what it is but it's there and it's great to have it. Then we move to the front of the water tanks which we have these little bits of detail that are fixed to the front of the tanks. I'm not entirely sure what they're there for, but they look like some sort of antennas perhaps. Not 100% certain on it, but they're there, just like they are in the real locomotive, and it's a superb bit of detail to have, and it makes the model look more realistic. Then at the front of the side tanks, we have that little bit of detail which the crew can climb up onto and get to the top of the water tank, so basically it acts like a step. Then we also have some pipe work that run just at the side of the smoke box there and 
round to the top of the side tanks there and also you have a bit of you have some sort of plate there with rivets on just at the front of the side tanks you know what I mean it's just under the pipe work at the front of the smart box there where the boiler is and it's a great bit of detail to have and there's a little bit of rivet detail on that as well then we have the separately fitted metal handrails which you do get obviously on both sides of the smoke box and in this case the handrails they don't run straight down the side of the smoke box in this case they actually are bent so basically where they are running a little bit straight the side of the smoke box they bend down to the bottom of the smoke box and that's just like how it is on the real locomotives and also we can't leave out the rivet detail there on the side of the smoke box and then we have the chimney on top of the smoke box. You can fit a smoke generator unit in there if you want. Well, I'm assuming you can, but I won't be doing that because I don't do that sort of thing. And the chimney is very accurate as well to the real thing. Then we come onto the smoke box door, which we have a separately fitted lamp iron above. We also have some rivets around the front of the smoke box door. And one thing I love about the USA dock tank is that the smoke box door itself, it's small and it's in the middle of where the smoke box would normally normally be because normally the smoke box doors are bigger in this case it's actually smaller and that is actually a, f a similar feature that has been carried on to the USA S160s as well and another thing the handrail that is fitted around the smoke box door I love how it's bent into the shape of the smoke box door so it curves around the smoke box door and that's another unique feature that these engines have. Then we move on to the top of the side tanks, which we have the water filler caps there with some rivet details on. They don't open, but then again, this model would cost a lot more if they did, and they don't really need to either, because they're there at the end of the day, and that's what matters. Another unique feature with the USA dock tanks is that they have three domes. Now, the dome in the middle is the steam dome basically, so it's the ordinary dome. But the outer two domes are actually the sandboxes, which they do that because it keeps the sand dry, so it doesn't get wet basically. And also you can see some pipe work there, just on the outside of those two outer domes. So you can tell that they are obviously the sand, the sanding boxes. And then we have this curious little bit of detail that you can see just in front of the outer sand dome, which is the rear one. I don't know what this little bit of detail does or what it's for, but it's there anyway. It's a nice little bit of detail to have. And also there's some rivets on that as well, which looks nice. And then, of course, we've got glazing in the front cab windows, as we'd expect. And on the window frames, we have rivet detail as well and the outer window frames are painted black which is a nice little touch then on the other side of the boiler you can see some more of the detail fittings for example on the middle dome you have the two safety valves and the whistle which is where the whistle and safety valves are located on the USA dock tanks in real life which is a brilliant feature to have also you have some brass metal handrail that's fitted to the front sanding box dome that goes up to the cab and also have another little bit of detail there which fixes down from that small handrail onto the top of the tank and also just in front of that sanding dome sanding gear dome I should say rather you have some more detail there not 100% certain what it's there for, but it's there anyway, and it's a great bit of detail to have. Then we move on to the cab roof, which we have a couple of rivets there, and some other bits of detail, which I don't know what they are, but they're there anyway. And we also have the cab roof vent, which in this case, it doesn't open, at least I don't think it does, but it doesn't really need to open anyway, but it's there regardless. Then we have glazing in the sides of the cab windows and more rivets as well on the sides of the cab. Then you also have the running number of this locomotive, which is DS237, which is crisply printed on the sides of the cab. 
You also have separately fitted metal handrails down the sides of the cab where the doors are. And then on the bunker you have a small separately fitted metal handrail and above that you have a printed what I do believe is a works plate of some sort. Then we move on to the cab interior which is excellent. You have the regulator, the pipe work and you can just about make out the gauges and the dials there which is really nice detail to have as well as the firebox of course and also in this model you have what look like wooden cab floors which is a great feature to have and even they are painted as well. Then we move on to the livery which has been applied very neatly and smoothly so it's a very nice even layer of paint with no mistakes in it but there shouldn't be any and the yellow lining it just highlights the livery so superbly and I do love how the running number on the sides of the cab has also been printed in yellow that looks really nice but not only is the boiler and the domes and the front of the cab and the side tanks and the cab sides painted yellow but also I do love how you also have bits of black paint in there as well and also I do love how the sides and the rear of the bunker have been painted as well with lining on that and I do love how the cab doors have been painted as, as well and there's even lining on those and it just looks so superb and stunning we also have the British Railways Lake Crest printed on the sides of the tanks on both sides and it's really been well applied and it's very nice and crisp and also we have Maunsell crisply printed above that which in this case Maunsell is the name of the locomotive and the lettering is been printed in yellow as well which I love and it goes really well with the lining and it looks brilliant on the livery really highlights it and makes it stand out then we move on to the rear of the bunker so first of all the rear of the cab has been painted black which looks really nice and also you can just about see a couple of rivet details there but also on the rear cab windows we have the guard irons which is a nice bit of detail to have we also have a coal load in the bunker I don't think it's removable to be honest but then again it doesn't really matter anyway because if you wanted to you could scatter your own real coal load above that load if you wanted to on the back of the bunker we also have lots of separately fitted lamp irons on the rear buffer beam we have a couple of rivets as well as a rear coupling hook and on the buffer beam you can just about make out a little bit of detail there with a hole in it that's painted black and that's where one of the brake pipes fits into which is really nice that they've done that you can just about see it there just at the side of the coupling where the rivets are and of course just like the front the rear buffers are not sprung but I don't care about that anyway but these buffers are made of metal just like the front ones and again just like the front we have a NEM coupling fitted in the back there so again like with the front one you could take it out and swap it for another one if you wanted and in the middle of the bunker we have the locomotive's room number crisply printed in the middle there DS237 which again is printed in yellow then we move on to the other side of the locomotive and there isn't much detailed differences to be honest there are a couple of details that are different to the other side one of those is the pipe work which you can just see there get a glimpse of at the side of the smoke box which runs just straight down alongside of the smoke box just under the metal handrail there and it is thicker and it is different to the one on the other side which is thinner and it bends upwards a bit from the smoke box in this case it doesn't but it is worth noting though that on this side of the water tank on this side of the model by the water filler cap there seems to be an extra cap of some sort which I'm not sure what it's there for but it's there regardless we also can't leave out the sanding gear on the model it is a fragile bit of detail so whenever you're handling the model do be careful with it because otherwise if you don't it will break and we simply can't leave out the detail of this model on the frames of the chassis just underneath the side tanks and the cab there 
and that really is stunning not something you get with every model that you get so it's a superb feature to have because it makes the model more realistic and it gives it a lot more detail and it makes the model even more stunning we then come on to the running of the model which as you can see it performed faultlessly and it just runs so beautifully and smoothly which is what we expect when we get these models brand new and out of the box we don't expect any jerky movements or any rough riding which is not present here it's just how it should be nice and smooth After running the model around the light, light engine, the model's then going to snuff all the other hoses, which in this case it had three in top. There might only be just three hoses behind the loco, but it just goes to show why the weight is still important, because even if it's just a coach, it needs the weight to be able to pull, because without the weight, well, let's just say it wouldn't be able to pull just one of these coaches, let alone three. One thing I don't show in these new style reviews very often, but I thought I'd show you a close up of that little rod moving up and down just under these side tanks there. Nice little feature that is to have on that. So, overall, the USA dock tank is an amazing model. I cannot find a single fault with it. I can't even find a little niggle that doesn't even let the model down with it. It's that brilliant. But I don't think I really need to say anything else, to be honest, because. To be honest, this video speaks a thousand words, so I'll let this video do all the talking. Because having watched it, you'll then understand and have an idea of just how amazing this model is. Well done to both Batman and Motorrail for producing this superb model onto the market. Because without either of them, we wouldn't have had this model on the market in the first place.
So overall, I'm going to rate the USA Dock Tank a 10 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter, reviewing Model Rail's exclusive USA Dock Tank, made by Batman. And I'll see you again soon for the next review. But until then, look after yourselves, and take care.